Bot new production. Long journeys can get pretty boring. Ben tried his best to put the time to good use by improving his Greek. This is the Athari. <laughs> Whereas I just played Monopoly on my phone. Oh, just gone behind the trees there. be a bit of an understatement, Ben. The Rio Anterior Bridge is the world's longest multi-span cable stayed bridge, actually beating the Tamar Bridge in length by over two kilometres. It also marks the end of this stage of our journey. Well, so we've had our first night in Patra, and, uh, well, after the hotel in Delphi, this one's a bit, bit of a step down, but, you know, it's perfectly comfortable and stuff, and we're not really here to hang out in the hotel, so it's it's fine. Patras itself, uh, we went out for a couple of drinks last night when we got in and sort of dinner. Everyone's so friendly and the city's really clean and full of just friendly people and happy music everywhere, you know. Um, yeah, it's quite a trendy city and there's because there's a lot of students here and stuff. But today we're going to actually go and see St Andrew's Skull that they've got in a church here and um, and they've also got uh, an acropolis with a castle on top. So we're going to go and have a look at that. But first we're going to go get some breakfast. After breakfast we made our way towards the Castello, but not before a quick cup of tea in the aptly named St George's Square. Well I say tea. Yeah, so we're just heading up to the uh, castle now. Um, we were sort of wondering when it was going to stop being a modern city and we'd see something ancient. And then we just came up the street and suddenly, there you go, all these uh, old ruined city walls and uh, yeah. yeah. Before we stop off in a ca co coffee shop or cafe as they call it. So that Dave could enjoy a uh, Mafia, ra so. Rafima yep. uh, and I could enjoy it. It's also a Rafima but they call it a Coca um, or an app. App Apps. An apps? Yeah, an apps, yeah. And uh, yeah. refreshing soft drink, that means. <laughs> what we've uh, been doing while we've been here is not necessarily the people, it's not necessarily the places that we've gone, it's, it's also about the people that we've uh, spoken to. Um, in Siri, uh, which is a fairly run down immigrant area of Greece, we ended up chatting to this guy, a taxi driver called Ioannis, and uh, he came over and as they all do, they all start talking about politics. Uh, it's pretty unavoidable. It's not like the UK where people don't have an understanding of it. It's in, it's in people's faces. It affects them here. So everybody just starts talking about it. I've been to, uh, I've, I've, I've unfortunately had to drag Dave uh, baby shopping. Um, in Athens, they had all the shops, none of the people in the clothes shop spoke English. So I did some research. And now I know that Moro means baby. Ben's uh, niece was uh, baptizo in Sheffield, as the Greek would say, or baptized in Sheffield yesterday. So, so uh, yeah, so he wanted to get her a gift, but yeah. In uh, Delphi, we met this girl, lovely girl, Helen. We've been in her company for about like 30 seconds, and already it felt like she'd been our friend for years. And when we were sat in the hotel lobby and she made us a cup of tea, it wasn't like she was making a cup of tea for people that. It felt like we were sat in our front room, it didn't feel, and when we left it felt like we were leaving a childhood friend behind. And it's a lovely day actually, surprisingly so, you know. Every day we wake up, we expect it to be cloudy and raining, and that, the weather's so boring here. Yeah, it's like, it's like Every the, day. the fast show sketch. Scorcho! <coughs> it literally is, but it did rain yesterday a bit for about 20 minutes. Mm. But yeah. Um, I'll let you know how the castle is. Yeah. 
Then uh, last night, we were just sat in the hotel Byzantinos. This guy called Pavlos came up to us, started chatting to us. Got chatting to him for about half an hour, you know, a fairly like lengthy stretch. And uh, really connected with the guy, I suppose. I forgot to mention as well, I bought some socks. I, th I think that's, that's a large part of it, you know, I mean, politics and the economy, when we're talking to these people, always rears its ugly head. Uh, some really some really nice people. I think we're going to start taking photos and getting email addresses of the people that we meet because some of them, are, uh, it feels really sad that I've only met them that once and I'm never going to speak to them again. So having psyched ourselves up, we headed off to check out the Castello. This was the Acropolis in ancient times, but in the 6th century the Byzantines built the Castello, which was used by the military up until the Second World War. Mm. Well, we went to the castle and it's pretty cool, but it's shut every Monday, unfortunately, uh, which we didn't know. It was kind of a rule, but we all know how rules go down in Greece, so they just let us in. Yeah, we just said, oh, we're only here today, and they were like, oh, okay. Oh, we'll just go around and take some photos if you want. <laughs> which is probably what we were going to do anyway, really. So how's it close? But yeah, it's cool. So now we're heading back into town, got to see what we wanted. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool castle. Um, there's probably actually an insert right now just showing you what it looks like while we're talking, but yeah. We're going to walk into town and see St Andrew's skull and a bit of the cross and all that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, see you in a minute. This magnificent church may look old, but its construction actually began in 1908. As we said, it houses the relics of St Andrew, which includes the top of his skull, a little finger and bits of his cross. Creepy. Well, we've uh, we visited uh, St Andrew's church and uh, yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. We couldn't, we couldn't really take photos of stuff inside, it just didn't feel right. But yeah, it was absolutely stunning. It's so much more visual than our churches. Um, and you can tell how much more they believe in things and stuff. You know, it's, it's really a testament to their faith. Um, and now we've just walked back into uh, Patras and we're just in the main square and there's, there's these amazing fountains with um, some famous figures from antiquity. Uh, this one's got Pan. Um, yeah, it's nice. But yeah, we're just going to chill for a bit and then we're going to hit the town a bit later. If there's one thing Patras is known for, it's its nightlife, thanks to its vast student population. We'd already become accustomed to local beers, so we took a bunch back to the hotel to warm up for a taste of the real Patras. Do that, so. We're gonna have a bit of a night out tonight and uh, mix with the locals and all that. Um, can't stay out too late, because we've got a coach early in the morning to go off to Olympia, but yeah, we're gonna go check out the town and have a few beers and stuff, so. Let's hope it all goes swimmingly well. <laughs> it's quite funny because Ben's talking to some girls now. <laughs> well, we had a great night and we met um, met this cool guy called Theo and he ended up picking up the tub. Um, and yeah, snow woke it up, um, bright and fresh and ready to head off. So today we're going to Olympia via Pergos. And uh, yeah, we've got the tickets already so we've just got to go get the bus. In order to get to Olympia, we had to change coach at Pergos, which is the capital of the Ilia region, the farmland of the Peloponnese. Despite being the region's capital, for tourists, Pergos offers little more for transport links. So we just had a bit of like an hour's break at um, Pergos, and now we're off to uh, Olympia on the bus and it should be about half hour. As I sat looking out of the window, it occurred to me that this was the flattest land we'd seen so far. In fact, if I had to hold a major sporting event in Greece, then I'd have been hard pushed to find a better spot. Well, we've arrived in Olympia. Um, it's quite a nice little village. The weather's got a bit nippy, so I've put a jumper on. I'm gonna go check out all the ruins and stuff tomorrow. One thing I have to say though is the uh, the view from our hotel room here is it puts Delphi to shame, seriously. Yeah. But yeah, we're gonna get an early night tonight so we can get up, check out the ruins, and then uh, and then we're off to Sparta tomorrow. But it's quite a long journey, so I'll let you know how it goes. I do have one complaint though. I really need a poo and the toilet door went shut. 
So we're, we're going out so I can have a poo. <laughs> it took us all of about three minutes to explore the modern village of Olympia, which consists of little more than a single road lined with souvenir shops. We were both keen to do something active after yet another day's travelling, so we decided to take a bit of a country stroll. To unwind. We're just going for a country stroll. To unwind. Before long I'd spotted a frog on the other side of the river and boldly decided that there was a good chance I could jump it. I didn't quite make it and I got a bit wet, at which point Ben was ambushed by a dog. Still, I managed to get an awesome photo of this cute little froggy. Hello froggy. Just woke up. Um got ourselves ready and packed because uh, we're off to Sparta a bit later um, but first we've got to go find out how we're going to get to Sparta and check out ancient Olympia yeah um, let's do it so uh, in Olympia today uh, bacon as ever we're having the usual breakfast of a cup of tea last night we had a couple of scares firstly they've uh, well, I actually was offered the key to the hotel door, didn't take it, and we ended up being locked out and coming to go to a cafe, asking to use their phone to phone the hotel over. And then when we got inside the hotel, we'd gone into a room and none of our stuff was there, so we thought that we'd been robbed. Uh, it's all okay now, everything's fine. Uh, we, were just, we just walked into the wrong room. I've just had to buy a scarf while I was here, for no reason, apart from the fact that when we were in Patra, Olympiacos, the basketball team, won the European Championships and so subsequently uh, I'm an Olympiacos fan. That was the uh, excitement of the last 24 hours but uh, nonetheless I'll fill you in if there's more to come. The Olympia Museum was fantastic. This is probably the biggest collection of artefacts we'd see on this trip which shows just how busy and venerable the ancient site was. A lot of the smaller finds on display are these little animal statues that ancient tourists and spectators would buy from souvenir shops. Clearly the ancient Olympic Games were just as commercial as our modern ones. There's also an incredible collection of statues and even some pretty well preserved glassware, some of which is over 2,000 years old. Quick, uh, quick fag break in the uh, botanical gardens, just been to uh, the uh, Museum of Olympia. Um, it was pretty cool. There's um, some of the most famous statues of uh, antiquity in there. Mm. We saw the moulds that were used to cast the uh, statue of Zeus, which was one of the seven wonders, um, until it was destroyed when it was taken to Constantinople. And uh, and we saw um, we saw the famous statue of Hermes as well, which I I actually bought a bust of, but they've got it in every train station, bus station, and hotel here. Oh yeah, Hermes, by the way, messenger of the gods, not uh, not the future armor character. Mm. Um, but yeah, gen generally sat in the botanical garden at the moment, having a uh, having a quick smoke. This is what I love about this country: is when you have a fag break, it's not some dingy bus shelter with the most horrific ashtray you've ever seen. It's a lovely garden. Exactly. Yeah, um, and now we're going to go and actually see the ancient site itself and all the buildings. Mm. Mm. Ciao! And it was handy as well because all we had to do was cross the road and we were there. And it was stunning. I've never been a fan of sports but this place really exudes an energy that would make anyone want to exercise. Some of these buildings are treasuries which represent the various city-states that would take part in the games. There's also a number of temples including the uh, mighty temple of Zeus which housed the infamous statue. This, um, this isn't the temple of Zeus, we, we didn't get any footage of that. Sorry. That looks Byzantine to me. For some reason, everywhere we've been so far in Greece, I'd expected to see geckos, but I'd not seen any yet, and neither had Ben. So how many geckos have you seen today? Um, I think four. Okay. But then we noticed in Olympia, there seemed to be loads. Yeah. So quick. Very quick. Those cheeky, cheeky geckos. We were spotting them everywhere. Sometimes they think they're hiding and their tail is sticking out as well. Goofy <laughs> <laughs> <Good for gecko. laughs> Such beautiful masonry. 
We couldn't resist having a little Olympic bout of our own since we were there. Ben lit the torch and we had a try at wrestling, pugilism and discus before a quick bout of star jumps to prepare for the big event, the 212 metre race. So, first time I've been in a stadium without having a queue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we wrapped up our tour of ancient Olympia, we realised we were now in a mad rush to check out the hotel and get the coach back to Pergos. But of course, a couple of classy gents like ourselves have to travel in style. <laughs> Carriage to back to the bus stop. <laughs> Two euros per person. I mean, I wouldn't normally go for a taxi in uh, Greece, but. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. Yeah, great! Yeah. So we're in a bit of a rush now. Um, we just came out to the hotel to get our stuff. So we found some uh, some lovely American people who they've got a car and they've offered to give us a lift back to Pergos. Because the bus the bus journey is rather complicated to get this by. Um, shouldn't be too bad, but yeah, this is going to save us some time. And, uh, and they seem like really nice people. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that horse ride was pretty cool. I, I don't think I've ever done that. Our new friends Gary and Sue took us as far as Pergos, which saved us a lot of time. Although I'm not sure Sue really appreciated my jokes about bad wind. Well, Gary and Sue, the Americans that gave us a lift, were very nice, and uh, they dropped us back in Pergos. Now we've got two hours to kill, but we're still way ahead of schedule, so it's all worked out really well. Pergos is a bit dull, though. But... It's only two hours, and then we can say, this is Sparta. So, yeah, next week we have my favourite episode, Sparta. Make sure you watch that. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bad news. Production.